Welcome to another Big Daddy D adventure. Today we're going to make a two-in-one table saw jig. The first thing up is a tapering jig that will allow me to cut, use my table saw to cut tapered uh, legs or any other tapered cut that I need to put on a piece of wood or a piece of plywood. The second part of this two-in-one is actually creating a high fence. And on the high fence, it's going to allow me to cut a board on edge for rabbits and things like that. I currently don't have a need for it, but at least now I have a jig for it and I do need it. Well, let's get started cutting. Well, the base of this jig is essentially a 10 inch wide by, in my case, I'm going to make it 48 inches long. And then after I have the wood cut, then it's a matter of cutting some dovetail grooves in it. And those dovetail grooves will allow me to use these dovetail clamps from MatchFit. So first thing to do is just lay out where I want to put these dovetail grooves. And in my case, what I did is I chose to run a groove linearly down the, the edge of it, uh, two inches off the edge on both sides. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some cross grooves and I'm going to put those four inches from either end and then 10 inches, you know, every 10 inches I'll have another one. So um, I guess the cross grooves, there will be five of them. And then the uh, horizontal or the longitudinal grooves, I'll have two of them. So what I have here is I set up my router table with a four inch offset. That'll allow me to cut the, the end grooves that go across the panel. But uh, I'm not able to cut the tapered fit first. So what I'm doing first is using a quarter inch uh, square bit and then cutting that groove so it hogs out the middle of that dovetail and then following it up with the actual dovetail and uh, that made a really good cut. Now that I have the two cross grooves cut into the ends of the boards I'm running uh, first the quarter inch router bit down the edge two inches from the edge and then I'll flip it do it again again having to go through the process of cutting a, a quarter inch router bit first and then following it up with the uh, dovetail bit to uh, finish off the groove. So hanging the board off of the uh, router table was a little unwieldy so what I decided to do is come back and use my trim router with an edge guide board uh, to cut all the rest of the cross grooves and uh, that worked a lot better. I think if I had to do it all over again I would have done all the cross screws with this cross uh, this board method. Uh, I will tell you it's a learning experience. Uh, I was trying to you know be quick about it, and uh, I decided to uh, you know use the quarter bit and I trimmed all of them out, and then I came back and used the uh, dovetail bit to cut the routers uh, for the actual tapered uh, clamp. And uh, that was, it turned out to be a little problematic. Uh, I didn't have a good measurement uh, for where I needed the, uh, the board to sit relative to the groove. So I did a little bit of trial and error and finally came up with a method of, uh, I got the board close and then I actually held the router up against it uh, to see where it was cutting. Uh, all in all, I got, it, I got it to where I could do it pretty quickly. But if I had to do it again, I don't know. I This turned out to be not so bad, but uh, I, the other alternative I could have left or could have gone with is, you know, clamp a board, leave the board there, change the router bit, and then run the dovetail bit. But uh, after I got into a groove, uh, you know, running one all the way through and then running the other one all the way through, it turned out to be pretty good. Again, just having to make sure that whenever I was measuring it uh, by eye, that uh, it was still square. Uh, keep checking that. But it, all in all, it worked out good. But definitely, I would probably use the uh, guide for all the cross cuts in the future. Well, with all the grooves cut now, I just need to do a little finish sanding. Uh, usually, there was a little bit of a feather edge or some splinters right at the edge. And uh, I decided to go ahead and run a, just a block sand. Uh, over all the, those edges uh, just to clean them up a little bit. It uh, was, was allowing the clamps to slide in a little bit easier. Then uh, what I did is I, I uh, put a, a quarter inch round over bit and I went ahead and rounded over three sides of this uh, with that bit about a quarter inch round over. And uh, I left the one side as a true edge 
That way that'll be the side that's opposite of the fence. And then that way when I'm using it as a taper jig that I have a crisp line on that corner that I can go ahead and measure to. All right, the tapering jig is done now. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a test piece. Uh, what I wanna do is cut from an inch and a half out to two and a half. So what I'm doing here is I'm just sliding those clamps over to lock it down and then lining up my marks that are on each end or wherever my taper is, in this case on each end, uh, with the edge of that board. Uh, again, I left the edge of that board without a round over so it's a nice crisp edge. And then with my fence set at 10 inches, and this is a 10 inch uh, tapering jig, uh, all I need to do is turn it on, slide it through, and uh, let's see if it cuts my taper. Well, that worked real nice. The clamps held it well, and uh, it measured out well. I uh, measured an inch and a half at one end and two and a half at the other, so I would call this jig a success. Well, the other part of this jig, this two-in-one jig, is that it makes itself into a high fence by just clamping it to the table saw fence. Uh, I clamped it in and it came up square, so that was a great deal. Uh, it's kind of neat with all the grooves that we put on the back. Of course, I can also add additional grooves if need be. Uh, I was able to just line it up with the, you know, the fence and then clamp it down. If I need to move the clamps around, I can. So uh, this match fit system is uh, pretty, pretty good. And uh, I would say it was also a success. I'm looking forward to seeing how I can use this high fence in the future on some of my future projects. Well, thanks for coming on another workshop project adventure with me today. As usual, if you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to go on more workshop project adventures with me, hit the subscribe button. As always, take care. Bye-bye. Well, thanks for sticking around for the bonus recap. Uh, I'd like to add this recap here at the end just to say, what would I do different? So if I had to do anything different on this project, what I would probably do is instead of just marking the lines for the router, uh, what I would do is I would come back in and add a reference line for where the edge of my router needs to go. Uh, in addition to that. That way, whenever I change my uh, bits out where I cut all of my quarter inch routers all the way across or all the way down, and then I come back and do my tapered uh, bit, uh, that way I'll have that reference line where my router edge needs to go, and that would be fixed for both of um, the different bits. And I think that that would make uh, this uh, project go a lot quicker and probably a lot more efficient. So I'll also remember that in the future when I'm having to cut multiple passes on a router to go ahead and, and mark or indicate the edge of the router guide, not just where the bit needs to go. Hopefully that helps. Take care. Bye-bye.